This lecture looks at <clears throat> the solar growth model and we're going to trace through a change in the depreciation rate. I'm going to do it sort of simultaneously, an increase in the depreciation rate and a decrease in the depreciation rate. I'm going to trace it through the key graph and diagram of the solo growth model and trace out the time paths of each of the variables we're interested in. These are the key equations of our model. Small k, little lowercase k, is total capital stock divided by labor. This is capital per worker. GDP is going to be come from, from a Cobb-Douglas production function of output per worker is technology times capital per worker to alpha, which is capital share and output. Investment is savings times GDP per worker. And consumption per worker is 1 minus savings times GDP, right? So out of your, your income, you save a fraction that you invest, and the rest of it you consume. Now, these are the variables we want to trace out time paths of. The other key equation in our model is the capital accumulation equation. So this is what generates this graph. And we start by looking at steady state, which is defined as when the change in capital is zero, which means it's constant. The change in capital is how much we invest minus how much the capital is falling apart. Investment minus depreciation. When investment is just equal to depreciation, this equals zero and your capital stock is constant. That is called steady state and that's what this level of capital is. Where those two just happen to be equal, we've graphed out this line and we've graphed out this line. Where they cross is our steady state. So that's where we start, period. The first thing we want to do every time we look at a shock or a change to our system is to use our brains for a second and think through it. What does this mean? If we start in steady state, we were investing exactly the amount needed to keep our, our capital stock constant. That means we were just investing enough to offset the depreciation. So we were painting our building, fixing it back up, renewing the walls, whatever it meant to just maintain that building so the capital stock stayed constant. If it suddenly starts to depreciate faster, this goes up, which means our old investment is not, a long, not enough to offset this anymore, and our capital stock is going to turn negative and begin depreciating the growth in our capital stock. We can see that here by moving to a higher depreciation rate, which looks like that. Let me draw it over here. What happens? Immediately, we have our old capital stock. This is how much we're investing. And this is now how much it's depreciating. So it's, e it's depreciating more than we're investing in it. So it begins to decline. That happens all the way until we reach here. So I can trace out the time path of capital, which is just this, we went from an initial capital stock here down to one here. Capital changes slowly, so when this depreciation got worse, we began to depreciate until we go down to this new level. Okay, this is a time path of what we see happening here. To figure out what happens to GDP, notice we just traced what happens to this and it shows up right here. So we know this didn't change. So this is going to follow, this is going to follow this. GDP is going to look exactly the same. Where this is our new GDP steady state. Well, now we know what happens to this, and it shows up right here. This didn't change, so this is going to look just like GDP. Mm -hmm. 
And consumption, because we know what happened to this, is also going to look just like GDP. So what happens on the other side? We can do that one more quickly. There's a decrease in the, in the depreciation rate. So initially, we were investing just enough to offset our depreciation rate. It fell. So this side fell, which means we're now over-investing, which means our capital stock is growing. That moves down here. Initially, we're investing this amount, but depreciation drops to here. So we're over-investing. So our capital stock is growing until we reach here. Using this here, we can trace out the effects over time. We have an initial capital stock and we fall, oh, sorry. We have an initial capital stock, and we rise up to a new one, like this. Since we know capital, we know what happens to output. It also rises to our new steady state level. Since we know what happens to output, we know what happens to investment. also rises to its new steady state level and we know what happens to consumption.